Hi there, my name's Ian, I'm a PhD student at Sheffield Hallam University and welcome to the fourth in this brief series of videos I'm producing which illustrate some of the features, the tools and tricks and tips that are in Microsoft Word that can help those of us who are producing these extended documents like theses and dissertations. Um, it was prompted by the fact that I've recently submitted the first full draft of my thesis waiting now for the feedback from that. That should be exciting. Uh, but also inspired by the folks who've come to me recently and asked if I could give them a hand with their uh, certain aspects of their thesis. Things like particularly what this episode is going to refer to and that's tables of, <coughs> excuse me, tables of contents or tables of figures. Something we need to include and boy is it tough to do if you need to do it manually especially if you need to subsequently having put in a table of contents and created it yourself then I'll find you need to update a different part of your thesis and then manually update the table of contents or the table of figures how much better would it be if that was done automatically so here we're going to take a look at um, how to put the table of contents and the table of figures in and how they work so the first thing that I'm going to do is navigate to our table of contents. You'll see if you have saw this in the past, you'll notice that I've already inserted one. But for the purposes of today, I'm going to get rid of this one. And all the uh, um, features that you need are in the references tab. So I'm going to go table of contents and I'm going to remove that. There it is. We're now back to square one and we can insert a new table of contents and look at how that's done. The first thing is, if you watched the last video or if you haven't, go back and take a look. You need to have applied uh, certain styles to the chapter headings and the section headings within your thesis. It's doing that that allows the generation of this navigation pane, but also it's the same underlying code which is used to generate your table of contents. If you remember, the way that you can do that is on the Home tab. And if you go to Styles, you'll see that where the cursor is at the moment has Heading 2 style applied to it. If I go somewhere else and click on that heading, you'll see that's got Heading 3 applied and so on. Heading 3 applied there too. So you need to make sure that rather than formatting your titles and section headings, you've used styles in order to do that. The last video shows how that can be done. Now, assuming that you've already taken that step, your table of contents is fairly easy to generate. So let's just position the cursor at the beginning of a new line underneath our heading. Um, and now we need to go to uh, the references tab and we go table of contents and you can choose one of the defaults and it's as easy as that let's say that's the layout that you want click on it wait a moment especially if you've got um, quite a lot of section headings and you can see that let's just jump straight back to the beginning that's now all being applied all the numbers the page numbers have been automatically brought in much much quicker you don't have to apply all these little dots yourself uh, that's all done automatically. If you have to do that manually, that can really foul up your formatting. Um, if we subsequently take out a section later on or add in another one, all we need to do is to right click this table and then update the field. It'll ask us whether we just want to do the page numbers or the entire table. I'm going to click there and we'll do the entire table. And it's as easy as that. If you've added an extra section or you've uh, just even put in a paragraph which is added an extra page that will now be accommodated within the table of contents it's that easy and straightforward um, what I'm now going to do though is I'm going to go back to square one and take that out and remove the table of contents um, that's taking one of the default settings using uh, a custom setting um, might be necessary depending on the regulations and advice that you're given by your university and the way that they ask it for it to be set up when theses are submitted. So if you go to table of contents and you go to custom table of contents, 
you now get a few more options. So this is the default. Um, you can, if you're producing it in web version, which is highly unlikely, if you're doing a thesis which is on the web, you won't be using Word to do it, I would guess. So we can take that out. Um, we can have show page numbers or not. So if I uncheck that, the page numbers are not visible. I don't think that's going to be very helpful to an examiner or your supervisors. Um, although if it's just a document that they will be reading on screen, then they'll be able to click through to each of the sections, either using the navigation pane or clicking in the table of contents. But for a printed version, let's have the page numbers, page numbers visible. You don't have to have the page numbers right aligned. That looks a bit unsettling, but these heading one is just a, a style. It would have your name of whatever. So abstract, for example, would be one, and then forward would be two, and so forth. Uh, so, you don't have to have the page numbers, but um, uh, sorry, you don't have to have them right aligned, but you can do. When it does right align them, it puts in some leading, at least that's what I call it. I think I'm right in saying it comes from the old uh, days of typesetting when, when lead was used in the process, but I may well be wrong. I'm sure there's an article somewhere on the web that you can point me to, so stick that in the comments if you do want to. Uh, illuminate me and uh, help my learning. Uh, okay, so that's um, what that is, but you can have different forms of leading if you wish, you just have the straight lines. Again, you might have to take advice from uh, the regulations that you're working to. Um, there are some basic ones which are already set up, so you can go that way or that way, and it's entirely up to you. We'll just go back to the default one for the moment. Uh, um, currently it's just showing three levels, so that's where I've used uh, different subsections within it. So if you've got a, a section within a section within a chapter, that will be three levels. If you've got section within a section within a section within a chapter, that's four levels. And I've got at least four levels in mind, so I'm going to show four levels, uh, and you can see how that looks within there. If you've got eight levels, it may not be best to have them all visible within your table of contents. In fact, it may be against the regulation. So you'll, again, that's something you need to check. Um, we've got other options we can modify, um, change. So if we look here, these are all the available styles that are within this particular document. There are some unusual ones that I've used particularly, and it's picked up my styles. They won't go into the tables of content, but they could do, depending on what you've done. By default, it's picked up these four levels. I've specified four levels, and it's applying currently heading one step, <coughs> excuse me, heading one style to table of content level one. Heading two to level two. That might not be the mapping that you want. You might want it arranged differently, and that can be done. You might not want heading one to apply to any level. So you can change that within there, should you wish. Uh, you can also modify the way that these look and feel. But if you like the fonts that are used, the size of the font, whether it's bold or so forth, from the modify. So table of content level one has this formatting applied to it. Table of content level two has pretty much the same, but there's now an indent and there are certain line spacings or so forth. You can change all of this just by going into modify and altering the different fonts, if you wish, the different sizes. You can change the paragraph and therefore the line spacings and indentation and so forth. All of that can be done within here. So if we say, okay, we'll just close that for the moment because I'm not going to bother doing that. Um, it would take a little bit too long. So we'll close that and just say OK. So now we've brought in um, a table of contents that we're hopefully happy with. So we'll just scoot back to the beginning of it. There we are. So we've now got um, this laid out. For example, sometimes it specifies that you shouldn't have indentations within here. Well, hopefully now you've got an idea of how that can be uh, taken out using that modify uh, within the table of contents.
What about tables of figures? Um, well, if we take a look there, again, I've not put any in here yet, but we can do a very similar process to the one we've just seen. What I haven't done yet, though, within my document, I don't think, is to apply any figures. Uh, I've got figures there. I'll show you what I mean. An illustration. Let's go to a figure that we can actually take a look at. Uh, there we are. So if we go here, there's no apparent formatting being applied. And the way that tables of figures work is they use the captions that are applied to figures. So because this has no caption, there's nothing there yet. So if I right click on it and I go insert caption, you'll notice that it automatically puts in figure and it's the first one that I've uh, applied any caption to so it's going to call it figure one you don't have to use that you can use different um, words in front and you can create your own should you wish as you saw at the beginning I'm going to go on to create a table of tweets because there are a lot of tweets within my thesis you can specify it either above or below I tend to go below, but you don't have to. You don't have to have the label showing, so if you want to get rid of figure, you can do that. Uh, but it's sometimes helpful because within the text, you sometimes refer to, as you will see in figure one. So having that there is useful, but you could abbreviate it to fig if that's preferred. Um, you can change the numbering should you so wish to do so, so you don't have to have one, two, etc. You can have all of the other numbering systems which are within there. And you can include a chapter number if you use those. That's not something we've done yet, but something we will look at in a future video. So we'll just say, OK, and there we go. It's automatically added figure one. So if we now skip on to the next page and I go right click, insert caption, it will automatically pick up the fact that there's one figure that's already been captioned. So it calls this one two. And We'll keep the same settings and it goes below. Um, I'm not sure whether this is a figure or a table. That's a table, so we'll leave that one as it stands for the moment. But you can do tables in the same way. So we've now got two figures done and we'll get a sense of how that works. So if we go back to the beginning, uh, let's do that through the navigation pane. Table of figures. So if we now go here and we go insert table of figures, and again, you can format it in a similar way to the way we did using the in, within the table of contents. This looks very, very similar to all the other things, so you can change the look and feel of it. But we'll just say OK. And there we go. We've got figure two, three, four, five, and six. Um, this thesis, uh, this draft, was produced by pulling in text from lots of different documents, so it looks as though I've got some others in there. That's, that was a useful thing for me to do to find out. Um, I wonder what they are. If I click, control click, we'll go to it and find out. Ah, OK. So what I'm going to do is click on that caption and delete it. Because I don't want it to be there within the draft. That will confuse my supervisors. <laughs> OK, so we'll now go back to our table of figures and tweets. And it's still there, as you can see, until I right click, update the field, and then that takes it out. And then I'll now repeat that with the others. Um, you could name the figures as you go through. So let's jump back to that one. And where is it? Figure one. And if we in right click on that, uh, or perhaps that's a really good point. I hadn't thought of this. I would normally do that at the start. Let's try putting in a um, diagram. Oh, fingers. Now let's go back to terms of figures and tweets. So let's see what's happened. This will be a learning tie table. There it is. It's picked up that label that we've put in. So sometimes we also give names to figures as well. So they make a little bit more sense when you're reading the table of figures. 
Okay, so I mentioned chapter numbers. We'll maybe be looking at that or perhaps at a different topic in the next episode.